Okay, good morning once again. Uh, good morning, teacher. 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 Uh, last time we looked at forestry uh, in British Columbia. Okay, then. let me just wait for this person who's going to bring from Mitchell. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, last time, uh, we looked at uh, forestry. Look at forestry in British Columbia. Remember, we are still looking at British Columbia. Columbia. Then today we are going to look at another sector, and that is fishing. Fishing in uh, British Columbia. Colombia. Yeah. So last time we looked at uh, we looked at forestry and we looked at how these people are doing their forestry, everything, and what and what and what. So today specifically we are going to look at fishing in British Columbia. If at all you have any question, you just raise your hand, then I'll tap on your name, then I allow you to talk. Yeah, and those people who missed last time's lesson about forestry, you can go on our YouTube channel. Yeah, the video is there, and you may check everything is there. So specifically, today we are going to look at a fishing. We are going to look at uh, fishing in British. Columbia. Now, let us start. When I, I talk about fishing, what comes into your mind? What is fishing? Okay, Hannah. Hannah. Hannah, first wait. Hannah, talk again. Fishing is the extraction of fish from the. Yeah, fishing is the extraction of. Okay, thank you. He's talking about fishing. Is the extraction of fish from water, water bodies. Any other person with a contribution? Let me go to uh, Gava. Fishing is the extraction of aquatic animals from water bodies. Yeah. She has helped us to add aquatic uh, animals. Animals, aquatic animals. I think all of us will have the same. Hannah, I'm seeing your hand is still up. Hannah. Hannah, any other contribution? No, I had forgotten it up. Okay. Now, let us proceed. After knowing that fishing is the extraction of fish from the water body, or the extraction of aquatic 
the best one to use the extraction of aquatic animals. Aquatic animals. When I say aquatic animals, what comes into your mind? Uh, Vivian. Animals that live in water. Animals that live in water. Thank you. When we talk about aquatic animals, we are meaning uh, animals, animals living, living in water. So don't be confused. But uh, for you, don't call yourself aquatic animal because you swim hard, you don't live in water. You just go there and visit. Let me walk there, we are clear. Uh, let us proceed um, here. Let us, I'm seeing now. Let us proceed. Uh, Let us go to the next thing. After seeing that, uh, we are going to look at some little video here. Uh, let me share my screen so that you can be able to see it. Uh, let me go. Yeah, already this work is there in the Navisunsa e-learning platform. When you go to form two, when you go to course, you select form two, like for example, geography. When you tap on geography on your on your screen, ready to work up. Yeah. Okay. Now let us look at uh, fishing. Fishing. Uh -huh. Let us look at fishing. Can I get one person to read for us? Beginning here, you raise up your hand. Uh, let me get a, a chain, a chain, a chain. A chain. Okay, you read for us here. This is the. Fishing is the second major economic activity after forestry in British Columbia. British Columbia produces about 60% of Canada's fish catch. This is largely in the coastal waters and to some extent. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, now here they are saying, uh, fishing is the second major economic activity uh, after forestry in British Columbia. Uh, British Columbia produce, produces about 60% of the Canada's fish cut. The fish which is caught in British Columbia, 60% is good from, uh, from, uh, from uh, that. The fish, 60% which is caught is from British Columbia in Canada. This is uh, largely in the uh, Pacific Coast West. Let me show you that uh, where they do. Uh -huh. This is British Columbia. Looking at British Columbia, these are other states for British Columbia, but British Columbia is near Pacific Ocean. That's why you see for them, they do fishing, as you will see on your screen. Am I clear? Yeah, I know you are clear because already I have muted. So Pacific Ocean is here. So British Columbia is here, as you see on the map. Now, after seeing that, uh, these are some of the videos showing how fish is, uh, is done. But I think, let me play for you this one. Let me first stop. Let me first stop and then see which one is. Okay, let me play you this one so that you can be able to see. Can you 
Yeah. Uh, after observing that video, uh, I want you people who have been observing that video, you tell me what you have observed in the video. Yes, one thing you have observed. Uh, now wait to me. Yes, now wait to me. What have you observed? Um, teacher, very modernized machinery is used. Yeah, she has observed that they, they are using okay. modern mm -hmm. technology. Technology. Example, uh, now wait a minute. Can you hold me some of the examples? So what technology do you see? Like the freezers. Yeah, thank you, Evie. The freezers. We can call them deep. This one you can use it when they ask you uh, preservation methods. You can talk about that. Now, let me get another person here. Uh, Leila. Leila, you can speak. Ampire Leila, unmute yourself. I think she's not ready. Yes, Leila. Yes. They use freezers. They use what? Okay, thank you, Leila. Uh, Martha. Martha. Sure, Martha. They, have, they have a number of people specializing in different departments. Like we can talk about, they have skilled, specialized specialized labor. Uh, let me get a Nankavira. Yes, Nankavira. Teacher, sure, they have market. Yeah, they have market. The, the fishing is had white and ready market. That's why you saw they were parking. Yeah, she observed that these people they have a white and ready market. Uh, uh, Hannah, Hannah, what did you observe? Modern fishing methods. Yeah, they are using modern fishing methods. Yeah, let me see another person. Vivian. Uh huh. Presence of large and deep fishing grounds. Yeah, the, the fishing grounds, they are fi the fishing, fishing grounds are wide, wide, or oh, large, you can say large, TV, Pacific Ocean, Ocean, yeah, I think we have observed that. Uh, Chelimo, what do you have for us? Um, they have good storage facilities. Pardon? They have good storage facilities. Storage facilities. Yeah, we can talk about they have the storage, modern storage, uh, storage facilities. As you saw, we are keeping their things. Uh, Leila, do you have any other contribution before you proceed? I'm seeing your hand is up, Leila. Ampaire. Okay. Uh, Peru, I'm seeing your hand is up. The fishing grounds are ice free. Ice free, yeah, thank you. Yeah, those people have observed all those things. 
Now, before we go to factors favoring problems, first contribution of the fishing sector, the development of uh, British Columbia, we are going to first look at the fishing methods. And uh, if at all, I know some of you will do research. What are some of the fishing methods, the modern fishing methods you know? Modern fishing methods, you know. Yes, I'm seeing Namazi. Namazi, uh huh. Channel method. Pardon? The channel method. Channel method. Channel method. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, number zero. Number zero. Drift melting. Drift oh. melting. Drift ne melting. We talk about drift. Drift. Drift melting. Yes, a smart. No. Yeah, we have the long lining method. Uh, let me pick Huda. Who oh, Huda? Um, love start trapping. Yeah, no, this, okay, thank you. Then uh, let me pick another person who is new here. Wanyoto. Uh huh. Passing method. Passing. We have the passing. Same method. Uh, there is one which is last. Yes. Pardon? Trolling. Thank you. We have trolling. Okay, people, you can put down your hands. These are the main fishing methods which I used. These are the main fishing methods which I used in British Columbia. Don't talk about these books because we are looking at commercial fishing. Then these ones are called fish, fishing. Methods. Fishing methods. Uh, people, you can put up your, you can put down your hands because uh, these are the methods we are looking at. Mainly, we are going to look at these methods. First of all, let me start with the first one, the drift view nature. The drift unity. Okay, this method is simple. They just get a net and they put it vertically. They put here four floats, floats, we call them floats, floats. What's the use of floats? Like the way I say you float. When I say you float on water, what do, you, what do I mean? Eh? Any, any contribution? Yes, Hannah, when I talk about floats. Uh huh. What do you understand by floats? Mm. Yes? Things like moving on uh, top of water. Pardon? Think like um, moving on top of water. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Amina. Okay. Amina. I think uh, like they fix weights to straighten the net in water. They, 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 they hope the net to float. Then here they put here some heavy things. They are called weights. Why do you think under the net they put their weights? 
this one to do the weight width. Ah, uh, anyway, uh, let me see. Now, now we're Why do you think they put their weights down here? They put weights to make the net hang vertical in water. Yeah, so they put the, the they put the floats so that it can help the net to float on the water. Then they put heavy the weights. They can be weights can be stones so that the weights can make the net to be vertical. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? The problem I don't have. Okay, let me use this paper to explain it very well. Uh, like they put it vertical like this. Here they put their floats so that the the net can be floating on water. Then down here, they add their weights so that the weights, if at all the net is like this, the weights, they pull it so that it can be, it can be what? Vertical in water. Now, let me show you this short video and you see how it is done. Let me start with gill netting. Uh -huh. Here they made a mistake in typing. Okay, here they are saying, this is a method. Uh, let me first repeat again when I'm sharing. Yeah, sound is on. Okay, here they are saying, this is the method. Okay, everybody, you want to read for us? This is a this is a method to catch pelagic fish. Uh -huh. A net in a suspend a net is suspended in water with floats at the top and weights at the bottom. Uh -huh. The net hangs vertically in water and the fish are row five leave HJ. Those uh -huh. Leave those ones. Uh -huh. You continue. Continue from here. As they as they pass. try to pass, as they try to pass through the net, mm. once trapped, they can move neither forward or backward. Mm. When the fish has been caught in the net, when the fish has been caught, the net is removed onto the drifter mm. shop for processing. Illustration of drift, of drifting method. Okay, now let us look at that video. They are saying when the net is you not. Know, these fish, they don't have sense like the way you see human beings. They're like, ah, uh, uh, here. But even you people, you know, even in you normal, know, you people, you trespass. Because these fish, they have the same sense you people, you use that. Let me also trespass here. Then when they try to take their, their heads, the, the net catches the, the, the gills. It cannot move out. It cannot go forward. That's what they mean that. When it, is, it try, when it tries to enter the net, it is caught under the gills so that it cannot go forward and it cannot go backward. Let us look at this video and see how it is done. Gill nets are walls of netting designed to entangle fish. Okay. Gill nets are walls of netting designed to entangle fish. Now people, you see, these are the floats and here they put there the weights. So that's how the animals, the aquatic animals are called. So the, 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 the what? The net is supposed to be suspended vertically, meaning from top going downwards. Then they put the other floats, as you see the floats, these are the floats. They hope the, uh, let me put this. Yeah, these are the floats. So it is kept vertically. Then here they tie the weights so that it can remain when it is vertical. These nets can also accidentally like sea turtles, marine mammals, and sharks.
fishermen can take measures to reduce this accidental catch by setting the nets deeper in the water column to allow room for animals to swim over and adding gear like pingers, which warn passing marine mammals. Fishermen can reduce the adverse impacts of this type of fishing gear on ocean wildlife. We are going to look at another method. We are looking at another method. So that's how the, the gill netting it is done. That's the method. The fish, when they try to pass through the net, then they are caught. But they, you are supposed to be having floats to hope that need to be floating on the water. Also, you need to have the weight so that they can make the net to be vertical. Now, let us go to the next method. The next method is passive sailing. You look at the passive sailing. Okay, let me share and I get one person free for us how this method is done. Yes, can I get one person? Uh, let me get Martha. Martha, Martha has ran away. Okay, uh, Chelimo, read for us. This method is also used to catch pelagic fish living near the water surface. A passing net is laid out in a circular form below the water to trap a shallow fish. The fish shoals are, uh, are located using an echo sounder. At the bottom of the net, a ring exists through which a rope attached to a small boat passes. The small boat is used to lay the net, which net is suspended by floats at the top and weights at the bottom. The net has a close mesh where fish are caught by gills. After the circle has been made, the rope is pulled to close the bottom of the net, thereby fish. The net is lifted onto the boat for sale. Okay. Now, before I show you the video, this is how this method is done. Now, they get like, this is the main, this one, let me call it the ship. This is the ship. Let me hope you can, let me do something. I have, uh, assuming this is the ship. This is the ship. Now, they get this net, almost this net is like, like, uh, like a what? Then they get like a small boat, like a small boat. Then this a small boat, there is this net. Um, Okay, what they try to do, this is the method. Uh, they have the main boat. The main boat is like the center. Then they get a small boat. They tie there this net, like the new net. But now the method is they move in a circular way. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? They move in a circular way. Then this boat comes back here. So whatever fish, which is between this, area, this circle, they just drag and they take to the main, to the main what? To the main ship. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's like, I have a main ship, then I get like a small ship, then like a small ship moves, like a small boat moves around to, to lay the what? The net, then it comes back. So it means all the fish, which is between that circle, we are going to just drag and we bring to the main ship. And all that, the fish which is between this circle, all the fish which is here, the fish which is here, even I forgot how to draw fish. Uh -huh. All the fish which is here, it's just dragged. I see how the bus saying is working. 
Nabadda, I'm seeing your hand is up. Nabadda. Salma. No, teacher, I wanted to read. Okay, you are going to read the next. Okay. I think this method is here now, people. You just, you have a main boat, then you get a small boat to lay the, 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 the net in a circular way, in a circle way. But all the fish which are between that circle, you just drag and you take to the main. Then that's how the, that method is done. Let me share the video and you see how Pastor is saying it's done. Fishermen use purse seine nets to capture schooling fish like tunas, salmon, and anchovies. Sometimes fishing vessels deploy floating rafts called fish aggregating devices, also called fads, to attract fish in the open ocean. Large nets encircle the school of fish, as well as other animals that may be in the ocean. Okay, now let me explain. This is the main ship. So they get a net. I see this one with a small boat is having a net. Then in the middle here, they have those device. They make some funny sound and that funny sound can attract uh, the fish to come near that sound. Like for example, these people who go and fish silver fish, yeah? they put some light at the top, they get like a, like a, this, this, this torch you use. Eh? They put it on the float, then they put their light. That Mukene likes to come near light. So it all the Mukene will run to that light where that light is. Then they end up catching it. So this is the same thing. These people, they have devices. They make some funny sound that attracts these fish to come near that sound. Some of them, even they put there some little fish to attract the big ones like baits. So now this person with a small boat starts to move around, 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 and comes back. Then after coming back here, then they tie the rock. Large nets I encircle the school of fish, as well as other animals. Yeah, they're supposed to be there. Animals that may be attracted to the fat. Are you seeing how he's moving? People, you see, now he has made a circle. If I told you, you try to observe very well in the water, you are seeing that there is a, when you observe here, there is a circle. Here, the net is almost, the, it's the same method that we use uh, gill netting, but now the, 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 the net, it is done in a circular way. So that all the fish which is between, trapped between here is going to be taken. So they move like this, like this, this one with like a small boat. So for passy sailing, you have to have a main boat and a small boat to lay the what? Uh, the bottom of the net is drawn shut to prevent the fish. Now all the fish has come between. Now they want to come here to see what is there. You, you know these fish, they are like human beings. They have no gamble because they have had some sound they bring their stomachs near here and they are, end up being caught. So, escaping. I see. And then the nets and the fish are gathered into the fishing vessel. Are you seeing that already? Are you seeing how they are? They are trying to move it together. You are... uh -huh. So now they move the fish in between. Then all the fish which is between there. When purse saners use fads, the accidental catch of juvenile fish, sharks, and other vulnerable animals can be a serious conservation concern. By eliminating the use of fads, purse saners can significantly reduce the number of animals that are accidentally caught by this fishing method. Yeah, I think we have seen past the same. Now, let us go to the next method. Now that you are going to read for us. Long, you read for us, long lining. Long lining. Mm. This method is used to catch fish, demaso fish. Mm. Sorry, this method is used to catch demaso fish, 
found in deep water. It involves the use of long main lines, which attach with attached drag lines, which have hooks with bites. Mm. The main line or main rope can stretch for several kilometers with about 200 drop lines. Mm. The fish are caught as they try to eat the bites. When enough fish has been caught, the line is pulled out of the water and the, sh and the ship and fish are removed for processing. Illustration for long lining method. Yeah, thank you, Nawan. Now let me explain for long lining. For long lining, you need from the one boat is enough. One boat is enough. You just get to your boat or your ship. Then you put there a line. It can be for it can be any distance. Then you put there hooks. They put their hooks. This method is easy to explain. They put their hooks. Then those hooks, they put there some little food like bait. Some little food. It can they can put there even fish. But they put there some bait, meaning even sometimes people they use uh we call them earthworms. Yeah, they can put their earthworms so that these fish when they come, the fish they come, this fish which tries to come to eat, they are caught. I see when the fish come, they are caught. I see. So when the fish tries to eat the bait, in, in Uganda, for people, what they do, they put their pancake. People who have ever gone to, to, to those fishing areas, but when they are using this method, they put their pancake. So don't be there bragging around thinking you are the only people who enjoy pancakes. Even fish, they get small pieces of pancake, they put there, they put there, they put there, they put there. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? I'm explaining. People are asking me funny questions. How can you ask me? Which fishing method are you explaining? This one is called this one is called long lining. This is called long lining. There is a long line. And they put their hooks. So they put their hooks. Hooks. They put their baits. Yeah, not boats, baits. Baits means in Uganda we call we call it omtego. Uh, we call it omtego. The baits is the same way you get the rats and you put there some things. Eh? That's what we call baits. You want to get that rat, you you buy your you sacrifice your piece of meat or your, your piece of uh, fish. That's what we call bait. Now, let me play for you that video and you see. Long line vessels deploy miles of fishing lines in the open ocean. Are you seeing these people? They are deploying a long line. This long line, it can be, you can put it from here up to where you get it, but you count the baits, which are the hooks. Like you can count and say, I'm going to put there 300 hooks, meaning that I'm expecting to get 300 what? Fish. Are you getting? That's how they do it. In pursuit of fish like mahi mahi, tunas, and swordfish. These vessels have the capacity to set up to 50 miles of baited hooks that can be left to soak overnight or for several days. Along with capturing the target fish, the hooks may also ensnare a variety of ocean animals, including sharks, endangered sea turtles, seabirds, and marine mammals. Okay, what they are trying to say, the disadvantage with it, this method, when you try to put there the baits, do you know those birds which even move from up and they see fish in the water? They can even, they can also be victims. There are those types of fish which you see on, uh, on TV where the, the body can be up, uh, but can see what is in the water. So when you put there that lining, 
you end up catching the what? The birds than catching the what? The fish. Yeah. So that's what they are trying to explain. Fishermen can take measures to reduce the accidental capture of some of these ocean animals. Setting the fishing lines deeper allows many animals to swim over the top. A specially designed fishing hook called a circle hook can make it easier to release an animal that's accidentally been caught. Adding streamers above the water can scare away seabirds and save them from being caught on fishing hooks. Effective fishing gear modifications like these can reduce the impacts of longline fishing on ocean wildlife. Okay, now we are going to go to the next method and that is the trolling. Can I get one person to read for us? Raise up your hand, you read for us, trolling. Yes, Lisa. This method is used to catch the mass of fish living in deep waters. A corn shape net is dragged behind a ship or boat called a trawler. A trawl net is a bag shaped net whose mouth is kept open by other by other boats, either wooden or metal and has weight at the bottom and a slim cord end. Any fish that enters the net is trapped at the cord end and after the trawl net is pulled out of water and emptied onto the ship for processing. The process is repeated. Okay. That is trolling. Let me explain this method. But this method is dangerous. Even people, they don't want to use, they don't encourage people to use it. What in, in Uganda, it's called the Mogogola. It's like you are clearing even everything. So this is what they do. They get like two ships. Then even another one here, they can be boats or ships. Uh huh. Here and here. Then they get a net, but a net is in uh, this shape. They tie there a rope, even a rope. This is a net. They go in the middle of the sea. This is we are on the trolling. Trolling method. Trolling method. Then what they do, these people, the fish, assuming this is the shore, assuming they are going this side, this is deep water, this is water, 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 and the port is here. This is the shore. Like land where they land. So what they do, they get this one, any fish which is found in the way. It will be just dragged. It's like when I pull like this, automatically this fish is going to enter. Then I drag, but here they put their loads. They put their loads, or you can call them weights. Now, these weights, they help the, the net to be, to reach down. So all the fish, then they drop us, they go to the, to the land. So whatever thing you which is there, metal, what, stones, everything is just taken. That's why this method is not encouraging. It's kind of destructive. It destroys many things. I get what I'm trying to say. This is, this is what we call trolling. Uh, let us look at the method with a video and we understand it more. A bottom trawl is a type of fishing net that's pulled along the sea floor. Fishermen commonly use bottom trawls to catch shrimp and bottom-dwelling fish like halibut and sole. 
In addition to these target fish, however, the nets also catch a variety of ocean life that's usually thrown back, dead or dying. Dragging heavy gear across the seabed can also damage sensitive seafloor habitat. Reducing the harmful effects of bottom trawling requires either modifying the fishing gear or limiting the areas where trawling is allowed to protect sensitive bottom-dwelling organisms and their habitat. Or limiting I, I, how this method. All that the areas where trawling is allowed to protect sensitive bottom-dwelling organisms and their habitat. Uh -huh. As you see, it has destroyed everything. All the creatures which are down here, they are destroyed. Some of them, they are killed by that method. So that's how the method are done. Uh, for now, I, I want to take questions. For now, if at all you have any question about the method, you have not understood very well before we proceed to the next meeting. Anyone with a question? Anything? Yes? We have Tana. Okay, we have Tana. Okay. We have Tana, these are fish types, Tana. We have, uh, uh, we can talk about, there are many fish types. You can look at your work, even you can go on Google. Uh, then there are, those, there are two types of fish. There are those ones which are found on the surface near the, the, the land. Uh, then there are those types which are only found in the deep waters. That's why even when they were explaining, they were telling that there are those types which are caught from far and those ones which are caught near. Yeah. Now, what we are going to look at, I think people have, to, is trolling method done near the shore? Mm, no. Uh, why? Okay. That, uh, how can I explain it? They go in the middle, then they start dragging as they go to the shore. But whatever fish which is found in the middle, it is just taken. Any fish which is found in the way, it is taken. So they start it from the middle, because when you start it at immediately at the shore, there are high chances of not getting anything. So it's better you first start from the middle of the sea or the middle of the lake, then you come as you come to the shore. Then you never know that by the time you reach, uh, you reach at, the, at the shore, you will be already having the fish. Then I'm seeing someone asking, which of the method above is commonly used? All of them, they are used. All of them, they are used. It depends on the fisherman. Then it is showing only a few hope fix it million. Okay, I think this person was. I think, okay. But teacher, my platform is not showing the subject on the dashboard. Okay, they are going to work on that. Already Mr. Golova is on the platform, which is the cheapest. Eh? Man, that answer cheapest, it's something which is not easy to answer. When you ask me what is the cheapest, it depends on the fisher man or the fisherman. It's them to decide which one is cheap. Because for you, when I talk about uh, uh, KFC, Javas, some of you, it looks like expensive, not so. But there are those niggas who don't want to know. They see it, that it is cheap. But these methods are kind of expensive and modern. They need modern skill. Teacher, which one is the most appropriate that won't hurt the aquatic? <laughs> I'm seeing. Uh, I don't understand when you ask about your uh, hurting, because even you who is going to eat the fish, you are going to hurt the fish. But anyway, Pasi say uh, the other and trolling is not advised to be used because it's kind of destructive in nature. So people, they use gill netting, they use even uh, Pasi sailing. The most common one which is used is Pasi sailing. Yeah. 
then someone has asked, uh, let me see, what are the requirements to start fishing in British Columbia? Or you can just start like that. No, eh, eh, even just, even when you come here in Lake Victoria, you cannot just say, let me go and I start fishing. Hey, those people, they have associations. You have to get a fishing license. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? It's not like this, this, this video where you go to and you start fishing. Even those ponds, you cannot just go and you pond it, you, you fish from someone's pond. They can even arrest you. Even fishing is the same. You need to first get a license, a fishing license. Then they allow you, you tell them the methods you are going to use. You, they, they observe, what they, 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 they inspect the boats you are going to use. Are you getting it? It's not a matter of just saying there is water, let me go and I fish. You can try it at Lake Victoria and see whether they will not take you. Uh, what of the fisher women? Okay, they are there. But here they use the fishermen, but they are not meaning that when I say you are fishermen, that when you are a woman, um, I don't know, we shall do that research. English girls, you hope us. Do we have fisher women? Okay, what happened to my chat room? Uh, your chat room, uh, sorry, you have, uh, it's me to control it. Which method gets the most fish? I think it depends on your day. No, 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 it can depend on that day. Like the way you go to work and you fail to do what? To get any customer. I think even it can happen to this fisherman. Uh, what are the common questions? The common questions, they, are, they ask you factors which have favored fishing in British Columbia, contribution of the fishing sector to the, to the what? Uh, to British Columbia, then problem faced by the fishing sector. Those are the common. Um, then someone has asked, what is the favorable for both human and aquatic animals? <laughs> Your questions, man, they are not easy to answer. Uh, when is the most, what is the most suitable to fish? Okay, it depends on, we know there are many factors that they base on to use a method. Sometimes it can depend on manpower, uh, school, skills, then it can depend on the type of fish you want to get. Yeah, like that. Okay, now people, let, let me get someone to read for us here. Is the fishing sector? Yeah, it's the sector that benefits. Yes, Ramza, uh, Razan, Nasuna. No, so I wanted to read. Okay, let me share the work and you read for us. Okay, people, these notes are there. Let me get Ramza. Uh, Harazan, read for us. Uh -huh. Razan, read. Razan, unmute yourself. Factors for the development of fishing in British Columbia. Number one, presence, physical factors. Presence of a wide and shallow continental shelf, which allows sunlight to easily reach the seabed. And this supports the growth of plankton, which act as fish food. Number two, eating or mixing of the warm and cold ocean currents in two brackets, the warm North Pacific current and the cold California current, which also favors plankton tree, presence of a highly indented coastline, which promotes fish breeding and promotes the development of fish landing ports, such as Prince Rupert and Vancouver. Yes. Number four, presence of various offshore islands, such as Vancouver, Queen Charlotte Islands, which increase the fishing villages slash areas, hence large quantities of fish caught. Mm -hmm. Number five, thin infertile soils and the rugged slash mountainous terrain, which limits crop farming and in turn has driven many people to the coast to engage in fishing. Yes. Number six, presence of large forests to support fishing, for example, providing the required infrastructure 
of fishing vessels and collection of birds. Number six, of a variety of valuable fish species and in large quantities, salmon, abundant plankton, survival of various fish species. Number nine, presence of many rivers, presence of many rivers and streams such as Kombi River, River, from from plankton growth and also provide breeding grounds for ten feet big salmon. Number ten. Presence of large fishing grounds, particularly the Pacific Ocean, containing fish species and in large quantities like tuna, salmon, and mackerel. Number 11, presence of smooth ocean food promotes the modern fish like long line. Okay. Razan, thank you. Uh, People, you try to look through those points. You raise up your hand and tell me the point which is not clear to you. You raise up your hand and you ask which number point which is not clear before we go to the human. When you look at those points, which one is not clear to you? I say, ah, teacher, for me, I don't understand what they were trying to explain here. But I think all the points are clear. They are very clear. Okay, uh, I, I have a which number? Teacher, the first one. The first one, okay. The first one they are saying, presence of wide and shallow uh, coastal uh, shelf, which allows, okay, that one they are trying to talk about, uh, like uh, uh, they are trying to say that the, when you look at the water where they fish, it is wide and shallow, allowing light to pass through. And that light helps the planktons. Remember, planktons are like, like uh, plants which are growing, which grow up in what? In water. But remember, plants to grow, they need what? Sunlight. So that sunlight helps that planktons to grow. And later these planktons, when they grow, they are eaten by these fish, hence hoping the fish to survive because they have food in the water. Now, let me see another person who has put up her hand. I saw someone else, um, they are Chugozi. Chugozi. Teacher number three. Number three, presence of a highly intended coastline which promotes fishing breeds and promotes that development. Okay, what they are trying to say that this coastline, uh, you can construct there. It's like, it's not rigid. It's a flat land where you can develop a port, where you can construct a port. Are you getting? Because it is intended, meaning it is extended and uh, it is like the coastline. The coastline is like the land near the water. So it is flat and it favors the establishing or constructing of what? Pots. Let me hope they are clear. Okay, let us go to the fish, a human. One person to read for us, another person to read for us. Chirabo, Deborah, Chirabo. Yes, Chirabo, we are waiting for you. Chirabo, read. Hey, Chirabo, whenever I, I, okay. Let me, Pav, Pav, you read for us. How you read? Hannah, read for us. 
availability of large sums of capital to invest in the fishing industry, such as the purchase of modern vessels, the construction of ports, and carrying out fisheries research. Large supply of skilled and unskilled labor to work in the fishing industry, such as fish extraction, fish processing, transportation, and marketing. Presence of a large market for fish and fish products, both domestic and foreign, which has encouraged the fishing industry. High level of technology employed in, fish, in fishing, such as the use of modern fishing methods, in brackets, trolling, drifting, and modern preservation leading to high quality production. Intensive continuous research in the fishing industry into breeding hab habits, feeding, and maturation of various fishing sp fish species leading to high quality and quantity of production. Efficient or developed transport system involving developed ports, roads, and railways, which promotes fishing, distribution, and marketing of fish. Political stability of the region, which increases the confidence of investors and workers in the fishing sector. Supportive or positive government policy towards the fishing industry, such as encouraging investment by large companies and financing fisheries research. Long experience in fishing activities, which has also ensured high quality and quantity of output. Okay, thank you. Uh, and now let us go to the contributions. Can I get one person to read, the, to read for us? Contribution of the fishing sector to uh, Paul, let me allow you, but you don't talk. I don't know why. Paul? Paul, unmute yourself. Paul, either if, let me see whether you are using a laptop. Okay, you are using a laptop. Now, Paul, are you seeing where you see your microphone, where you see mute? There is some arrow which is looking up. That arrow which is looking up, you tap on it, it's going to give you microphone and speaker. Then you try to tap on microphone because you can hear me, your speaker is okay but you cannot talk to us. It means that you have to change the setting. And that one is too common to people who are using laptops. So you can look there. I know people, some of you be there saying, my people can't hear me, but I can hear you. It's just a simple setting. That's why I cannot hear you, but for you can hear me. It's because your microphone cannot send sound to us. Okay, now talk. You tap again where you tap, because I saw it was trying to talk. Concentrate on the microphone, don't go to the speaker. There are two options, microphone up, speaker down. Then you try to see that which option is going to work for you. Then you talk to see whether we can hear you. Okay, let me pick someone. Uh, Okay, let me take Patra. Patra. Contribution. Fishing has promoted industrial development by providing raw materials such as industries which make oil, fishmen, fertilizer, glue. Generation of employment opportunities in such as fish extraction, processing, transportation and marketing to improve their standards of living. Mm. Generation of foreign exchange through the exportation of fish and fish products to various countries like, like France, Belgium, Sweden and Spain. Fishing has promoted urbanization and port development such as Vancouver, 
Victoria and Prince Rupert due to increased population. Development of other sectors Aidan Patra. Patra. Patra is off. Thus, especially agriculture by providing fertilizers. Provision of government revenue. Yes, continue. Through taxation of the fish workers, it promotes international relations between British Coast, the fish, and Portugal, Denmark, and Spain. Deve Okay. Okay. Let me get uh, Nabasa Regina to complete. Nabasa. Nabasa, unmute yourself. Nabasa. Yes. Um, development of transport infrastructure, such as roads and rail networks, which transport fish products to the markets. Development of tourism due to large scale fishing, use of modern technologies such as stroller boats and factory ships, which attract tourists and in turn generates, generates foreign exchange. If has transport, if has transported divers, um, what? Fishing has transported diversification of the economy to reduce over depending on a few sectors such as forestry. Yeah, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Uh, then people who go in the notes, you read about disadvantages of fishing there because our time is out. Then also you go and read about problems first, the problem facing the fishing sector that work is there in the e-learning platform. You just go to the geography course, you go to uh, geography books, then automatically you find there the work about British Columbia. Even I'm going to add mining, I'm going to add the notes about mining, but these notes, you can copy them because they are well organized. Even the maps already, we put there the maps. The maps are there, like this map. You can draw using this map. Then about forestry, the map also has been put there. When you look at forestry, the map also is there. Are you seeing the map for forestry? Those people who don't have the map, it's there. You just go in the e-learning platform. Everything is there. Uh, I'm seeing in a pal, you, your hand is up. Unless when you have a burning question, but I, I pray we end here and we shall pick up from there, inshallah. Paul, do you have anything to say? Unmute yourself. I think you don't have anything to say. Okay, people, we can end here. Yeah.